Welcome to the TK Data Wealth Show. Today I'm talking about hedge funds and their strategy, specifically market neutral. Uh, I'm your host, Trevor Dale. I'm the founder of TK Dale Wealth Management and the creator of Million Dollar Mortgage under Ibridge Capital, number 13056, as a registration under mortgage agent. Um, so, talking about market neutral, before we get into this, I gotta do the lawyer thing. And the lawyer thing says that this is not meant as individual advice, this is meant for educational purposes only. Should you act on this information, I recommend you seek the help of a licensed professional prior to doing so. Uh, second thing is forward-looking statements. This may talk about things that may happen in the future. We do not guarantee results or anything like that as they cannot predict the future. Um, lastly, I'm also not soliciting any funds, stocks, or anything otherwise. So talking about hedge funds and their strategy market neutral, it's an interesting concept. Hedge funds are often one of those things that people don't know. Um, and I always forget this part, so before I do, uh, you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, and at tkdale.com, so please subscribe and share with one person. We'll have a comment for you down the, at the end. Hedge funds are sort of this like opaque thing. The people know the term, but they don't often know what it is. Uh, I used to work for a hedge fund management company, and they say, oh, that's great, I don't know what that is. So when you think about it a uh, hedge fund is basically something that is different and they, the word hedge used to mean something different than the strategies that are employed today but we're going to actually talk about hedging in this particular strategy so we're going to talk about market neutral and as the name it implies the idea is to be neutral any overall market exposures you're like well how do you make money then your money is made from individual stock picking ideally let's take an example of this it's called pairs trade Pairs trade is when you take one stock and you pair it up with another stock in a certain way. And what that does is it neutralizes the effect on the market. And what you're hoping is that the values of the individual stocks changes to give you a profit. And if it doesn't, it can cause you a loss. So what do I mean by that? Let's get a little more practical. So you could go long one stock, stock X, or in this case, let's use, not recommending either of these, but TD. You can go short Y stock, or you can name it RBC, whatever you want. Um, these things are, let's talk about long for a second. Long is anytime you buy a stock and you, you buy it at a lower price and you try to sell it at a higher price. That's going long. You're buying low, selling high. Shorting is the exact same strategy, except in the reverse order. You're still trying to buy low. So this is long when you buy low and then you're going to sell high. When you short, you're going to sell it first. So you're going to short it first. You're going to hope the stock price goes down and you're going to buy it back. Buy low, sell high. Same thing, different order. When you start here uh, with the long and you're going to hope that it goes up when you buy it. The other way with shorting, you're just going to go the opposite direction. You're going to sell it first. You're going to hope the stock price goes down. And there's a number of complexities when you're doing this. Shorting theoretically has unlimited risk because a stock price can only go down to zero when you own something. When you short it, Theoretically, the stock price can go up to infinity, and that's where the risk is in terms of shorting stocks. Theoretically. So um, what, let's get into the strategy a bit. So we're talking about market neutral. So market neutral is exactly that. What you're going to do is you're going to own one stock. So you're going to go plus TD stock of one value, and then you're going to go value negative value. So you're going to sell it first. This one you're buying first. RBC you're selling first and then what's going to happen is that you're going to go long one and short the other so when you're doing that what happens is you're going to own one and not and then you're going to sell the other one and so what happens is that you're hoping that the price on TD stock goes up and you're hoping on the price on RBC goes down ideally together these have a zero market effect now let's talk about that for a minute they're both Canadian stocks. They're both financial stocks. They both have international operations. Their business models are slightly different. How things operate within them are slightly different. And so if the overall market, let's say Canadian financials goes up and both of these stock prices go up, say you own a hundred worth of TD, a hundred, a hundred dollars worth of RBC, a hundred in each, the both prices go up 10%. If, the, if they were to be the same and the market goes up 10%, they would both go up 10%. But because you're negative 110 and plus 110, your effect is zero. So that's the market neutral. 
it doesn't make much sense, but let's talk about this for one more second. If the market goes down 10% and they both go down to 90, then again, you're plus 90 and minus 90 and you're at zero market exposure. Now in a directional market, you're not taking advantage of it. In what you're trying to do, how you make money with this is by hoping that even if the market goes up, you're hoping that TD goes up more than RBC does. If the market goes down, you're hoping that TD goes down less than RBC does. Because what you want is you want anything you own to go down less and up more. And anything you're short, you want it to go down a lot and up very little. Because you're always trying to make money. So this way you own it in the long, you're shorting it and you do not own it. You're borrowing it in a sense in the beginning and you're hoping that that goes down. So that's how it works. And that the advantage is that you have very little correlation theoretically to the market itself. So the overall market goes up, you're not gonna be subject to that. That's also the downside in a directional market. You can't take advantage if you're market neutral of an upswinging market. The downside is that if you're going, or the, the, the flip side is that if you're, the markets are going down, you wouldn't be subject to the same down ideally because you would have very little correlation. This is the theory behind market neutral. There's also, so there's an advantage that you're not as correlated, but the disadvantage is that you can't take direction, you can't take advantage of that directional shifts in the market. Um, so it's just something to keep in mind. Now, that's how the trade functions, it's how it's put together, but you do this once, that's great. You have one stock or a set of, you know, a portfolio of these, and that's great. Hopefully, you make money on it. That's where the fundamental, fundamental analysis is when you're valuing stock, you're looking at its growth profile, its valuations on a whole bunch of different metrics. That's where the stock picking comes in. Now, in order to do this and make more money at it, people deploy leverage. And the interesting thing is that you're hoping that these two stocks, that you do your research rate and that the market recognizes the value in what you see in these two markets. If the market will see what you see in the market or in these stocks, then you'll make money. If it doesn't, you'll lose money. If, the, if TD goes down in value and RBC goes up, you will lose money in this strategy here. When it comes to leveraging, this is very preferential because when you look at it, someone lending this fund money or the portfolio manager lending the money, what they're gonna say is, well, you actually have very little market exposure because you are not exactly exposed to the overall financial sector of it. and you're just exposed to this small movement of risk. It can be large as well, but there's less risk because it's a pairs trade, you're offsetting, you're hedging your Canadian financial with another Canadian financial. You're hedging that. Hedging means to offset it in a sense. And so what's happened is that they say, well, okay, so if you have $100 worth of stock in your account, we're only gonna ask you to put up $5 worth of margin or 5% on this $100. So then you can take that $95, you can borrow $95 against your 100, and then you can go and invest 195 in total. So you take your $100 that you started out with, and now you're investing a total of $195 in the markets. And not all institutions will allow you to do this where you have your accounts, but for institutional large hedge funds, they will negotiate preferential leverage inside of market neutral strategies. So, this is how it works and that's great. This amplifies positive returns. It also amplifies negative returns. So you have to have a manager that hopefully does well and not all managers are perfect all the time. You hope that they win more than they lose and that the quantities that they, that the, like the, the, the size that they win in is greater than the size that they lose in. That's what you're hoping for. So here we are talking about pairs trades, the, the leverage that they deploy and how all this works. If this makes sense to you, I want you to just to take the one thing that you got away and I want you to come up below on what that one thing is, whether how it relates to you, what you're taking away from it, what it's left you thinking with, do you have questions on the topic? So comment below or send us an email, get involved in the conversation. Um, let's have more discussions. We're gonna talk about more hedge fund strategies as we go through this and uh, there's lots more. So convertible arbitrage, long bias, a whole whack of other uh, strategies that you can learn about. And we'll talk to you soon about those. So again, I'm Trevor Dale, founder of TK Dale Wealth Management, creator of Million Dollar Mortgage. I hope you found this educational and I will talk to you soon. Have a great day.